So we're going to start this session uh, with uh, a, a small experiment, a thought experiment for you. Um, think of the device that you're using to view uh, this, this particular session. You could be using a tablet, a PC, or a cell phone uh, to view the session. Think of the different stages that this product, this device, had to go through before it got to you. So you have the product design. Um, people had to figure out what consumers want from this particular product and figure that into the design. Next, there had to be uh, an assembly line put together for assembling the cell phone or the computer. The parts for, these, uh, for the assembly line um, had to be uh, delivered from some kind of vendors. Uh, those vendors may be co-located uh, with where the assembly plant is, or they might be abroad. Uh, they might be as far as, as uh, uh, 10,000 miles away. Um, the employees who are working on that assembly line had to be trained in order to uh, make that product, to assemble that product in the right way, make sure that the quality of the product is correct. And finally, the, it had to be sold to you uh, from, through a sales outlet. So it had to come to you from a sales outlet. Now, it doesn't end there, um, although you would think that conventionally it's, it's sold to you, now it's in the hands of the user. Um, you do have the next step, which is uh, you might have questions about uh, the device. You might have some trouble after a few days, a few months, and, and you might need to call in to get some uh, help from the helplines. And, and that's another uh, task that, uh, that is involved with this particular device. And, and nowadays, we're also talking about uh, the lifetime value of the product. Where does it end up uh, in, in a landfill? And uh, what kind of disposal does it offer? What kind of parts have been used in that? Now, you've, you've gone through from product design uh, through sales through the safe disposal of this particular product. And, and if you think about it, operations management is, is involved in all of these stages. It is involved in the product design in terms of what are the different components that are going to uh, make this a manufacturable product. It's involved in supplier selection. It's, of course, involved in the, the assembly of the product. Uh, and it's involved in determining inventories for sales, uh, in determining the capacity for that call center that's going to give you uh, the, the, the help and the support that you need. Uh, and finally, it's going to be a, a logistics issue of how they're going to take the used laptops and computers and dispose them off to a landfill. So taking this a, a little bit further, what you can do is uh, you can think about operations management in a similar way in everyday products around you. For example, take the furniture that you're sitting on. It had to go through product development, through all the way to being delivered to your place, through now how you're going to dispose it off once you're done with it. Take the restaurant that you eat at. Uh, the restaurant has to come up with a concept, whether it's going to be a fast food or a restaurant that, that is a, a sit-in restaurant. And then they have to be able to deliver that concept through people uh, that are working in that restaurant and through managing their inventory of supplies that they need for that restaurant to run. You could talk about the car or the bicycle you use, and that had to be assembled from different parts, designed according to users, and delivered to the sales store that you bought it from. Or the recyclable waste that you dispose of, and, and how it gets separated and gets sent to, to the landfill and to the different places for recycling. You could also think about the news that you listen to or you read in the newspaper. Um, even that has to be put together in the form of a project. It has inputs in it uh, from, from different sources, and then it has to be ready for you uh, to consume. So what, you, what you're seeing over here is that operations management is involved not just in physical goods, like furniture, also in services like restaurants, but it's also involved in information exchange, uh, like the news that you listen to or read. Now, this brings us uh, to output view of operations management, which we're going to talk about next. But before we get there, uh, what I'd like to do is, is take everything that we've talked about and put it into a, a definition. It's hard to come up with a formal definition uh, for a concept like, like this that, is, uh, that pervades everything that we do. Uh, but we're going to give it a shot. So operations management is about organizations effectively and efficiently using their resources. Uh, let's pause there and, and see uh, what this definition is telling us. So it's about organizations effectively and efficiently using their resources. Effectively means that it should be using it for the purpose of what you are giving to the customer. And efficiently means it should be using it from a, uh, a cost-benefit perspective in the right way. So effectively means that the consumer gets what they're expecting, and efficiently means that 
uh, the company is able to make a profit out of it, is able to deliver things to customers uh, while making a, a decent profit. Uh, continuing on with the definition, uh, it is made up of resources and activities. Uh, so there are going to be resources, uh, the, the, lo the location of the plant, uh, the, the, um, the facilities that are needed to make things. Uh, there are going to be activities uh, within, uh, within um, the process that we're going to talk about uh, where they're going to have to do things to either make something or deliver a service to you. Continuing on. It has to transform material and information. So there's going to be some input of materials and information. Remember that input process output view that we started off from. There's going to be some uh, uh, transformation. Hopefully, it's value-added transformation. You're, you're actually converting material and information into something useful uh, into goods and services that customers uh, are going to use. So let's take this uh, input process output view uh, and 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 get some specifics out of it when you're looking at the business of any organization. So here's the process view of operations management. We're going to start off with the transformation process. And like we said earlier, hopefully it's adding value to the product. The transformation process is taking inputs from suppliers and delivering outputs to customers. What you have is the resources. Uh, that's the capital and the equipment uh, and the human expertise that's going in. And now we can put a circle around this and call it the organizational boundary. So this is uh, typically what we think about, generally what we think about in terms of an organization uh, that is making things, uh, make, making goods or services uh, to be delivered to customers. It doesn't end there because when you have inputs and outputs, you also have your suppliers and your customers. The suppliers are the people who are going to deliver, the companies that are going to deliver the the materials and information that is needed, and the outputs are going to be things that are going to uh, customers. Further, what you can think about is uh, there's going to be some information that has to flow between each of these stages. The customers have to give performance feedback. What do they like about the product? What they didn't like? How much more do they need? How much demand are we expecting? Uh, there's going to be performance feedback that goes all the way back to the suppliers in terms of how much raw material is needed and, and what kind of quality of raw material will be needed. And finally, uh, we can go beyond the organizational boundary and the suppliers and the customers that are intimately tied to, to uh, the, the operations management um, arena that we're talking about here and, and look at the external environment in terms of the competitors, the technology that's being used, and the regulations. The competitors are uh, who you're going to have to keep an eye on as an organization uh, to see um, what are the different developments that are coming up, similarly with technology and similarly with regulations. Uh, there are going to be regulations to a different extent uh, depending on which industry you're talking about. Of course, the food and drug industry, uh, you're going to have a lot more regulation. The airline industry, uh, the automobile industry, you're going to have a lot more regulation uh, than you would for, let's say, a, a mom and pop restaurant or a dry cleaning store, for example. Right. So now that we have the process view of operations management, uh, you also want to, to think about using this process view uh, for different things that you see around you. So two things that you need to keep in mind uh, over here is, one is the level of granularity at which you will study a process. What I mean by that is, you could be talking about a large organization that, for example, makes cars. Uh, the inputs are the things that they buy from the suppliers, and the outputs are the cars that they deliver to you. However, there are going to be many sub-processes uh, within this large process uh, that you're talking about of taking uh, components and converting them into cars. And each of these sub-processes can be studied. So what we're saying is that, the level of granularity at which you want to study these processes is going to be determined by whoever is analyzing the process. And that's going to impact how closely you study each sub-process. The second thing that I want you to think about is that every process is not going to be dealing with external customers. You're going to have support processes uh, that relate to the things that you need to do as a business. A car manufacturing company, is going to need processes for hiring people, for employing people. A car manufacturing company is going to need to um, maintain its facilities, and that's where it's going to need these support processes. So in summary, what we're saying here is that there's going to be this, this core process, and there are going to be some uh, support processes that need to be there along with it. 
also what we're saying is that there's going to be a large process and there are going to be sub-processes uh, that you can analyze, that you can study in order to see uh, how the process is working out. Now, what I'd like you to do is uh, use this input process view and apply it to any organization that you know of. Any company, it could be a profit-making business, uh, it could be a, uh, a non-profit entity that, that, uh, um, th that doesn't really care about profit but is, is trying to do some good. Um, and what I'd like you to do is apply the process view, the input process output view, and think about the main outcomes that this company, this organization produces. What I'd also like you to do in addition to this is you've thought about the core operations, the core processes. What I'd also like you to do is reflect on some of the sub-processes uh, for these core processes. What are some of the interim things that the company has to do, the organization has to do uh, to, to get the things done? And finally, what I'd like you to think about is the support processes that support the existence of the business. Um, so I'll let you think about it, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it um, and see how we can align uh, our, our thoughts there. All right, so now that you've had a chance uh, to reflect on the idea of this uh, process and sub-process, uh, core processes and support processes, uh, what you may have thought about is uh, probably a manufacturing business, uh, somebody that makes furniture, for example, an organization that makes furniture. Uh, so what would be the main inputs and the outputs of their core process, which is making furniture, getting wood and other materials, and delivering outputs, which are furniture that's going to be delivered to customers. What you could have also thought about could be a service. Uh, you could have thought about a, a uh, healthcare organization or a fast food restaurant. Uh, they get materials, they convert them into the food that is delivered to, to customers. If it's a healthcare organization, the input is the patients and uh, the, the output is the, um, the patients who have been treated in that uh, healthcare process. Now, if you're thinking about the furniture organization, you could break that down into the sub-assemblies uh, that, that would have been made inside the organization, inside the process, the big process that takes wood and converts it into furniture. The sub-processes will be making the sub-assemblies, they will be making the legs for the chair, they'll be making the tabletops that need to be put into all of these products. If you're thinking about the service, uh, you, you could be thinking about the sub-processes that are the little steps. Uh, when you go in as a patient to a, a healthcare clinic, you have to go through registration. Next, you have to get your vitals taken. Next, you have to go and talk to the doctor and then maybe go to radiology or, or, or pharmacy and so on and so forth. So there's going to be many different sub-processes. The important distinction that, that uh, we want to make here uh, in, in processes and sub-processes is um, some sub-processes will have the ultimate customer as their, as their customer, the person outside the organization who's getting that product or service while some of them uh, will be having internal customers. So when we think about a process and we talk about a process customer, it could be internal. The other aspect of processes is the support processes. If you're a restaurant or, or a healthcare clinic, you still have to hire and train people. You have to maintain facilities. Same thing goes for a furniture store. So hopefully what you have seen from this is that you can take any business and apply that input process output view and it's going to prevail uh, in pretty much everything uh, that we see around us and, and everything that gets done in any organization. You can use this view to um, analyze how they're doing, how effective and efficient they're being in their operations. So if you wanted to look at uh, the basic features of operations management, uh, what we're talking about here, what we've talked about today is that all goods, services, and information involve operations. You could be having, you could be talking about operations not just for manufacturing goods, although that's traditionally where operations management developed as a field. It was in manufacturing. But today we, we use the concepts, uh, the, 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 the um, tools that we have, that we've got from manufacturing and services, and we also uh, use them for um, information uh, kinds of businesses, uh, such as when you apply for an insurance policy. The second feature of operations management is that we typically talically talk about some kind of an evaluation, some kind of metric. 
we assess operations uh, based on what we were expecting, based on what we built, or uh, what we were expecting based on uh, what the customer should have received uh, based on what we built. Third, there are many uh, areas of organizations that are involved uh, in making something and delivering it. Uh, we talked about product uh, conceptualization at the start um, of the life cycle of products. Uh, you're definitely going to have some involvement uh, from marketing analytics there. You're going to have engineering involved if it's a, a manufactured product, uh, and, and uh, market research is going to uh, tell you what kind of products you should be making. So there are going to be uh, many different organizations as well as many different functions that are going to be involved. And finally, when we think about processes, uh, they could range from day-to-day -day repetitive ones or processes that have to be done many times in the day, so you're making many different cars in the day. You could be talking about a process that recurs, that, that happens, uh, iterates over a longer period of time. Uh, so um, every week uh, there has to be a, a change in, in uh, some of the aspects of, of a manufacturing plant. Uh, there could be a changeover, and that's going to be a uh, operation that happens once a week, for example. You could also be thinking about the very long-term strategic processes, uh, the process of uh, gathering information about how the company is doing and, and, and coming up with strategies for doing better as a company, uh, coming up with new marketing strategies. That may be done every six months, that may be done every year, uh, depending on the context of the company, and that's going to be a much longer-term uh, process. So processes can be um, ranging from a day-to-day, -day, the ones that we do, uh, repetitively to ones that we do maybe once a year for the company. So if you wanted to study operations management, which is what we're doing in this, in, in this particular uh, session, you would be looking at uh, four different aspects of it. The first aspect is operation strategy. In operation strategy, what you look at is the overall outlook for the organization. What should be their operations management goals? What should be the competencies that they should be uh, going for. Next, you could be looking at um, the input process output view and analyzing the operations of a company based on uh, some models that we can use from, from academia, from, from work that scholars have done, and, and being able to uh, make some assumptions about processes to analyze them and see how effective and efficient they are, they are being. Uh, so this can be done at a strategic level, but process analysis can also be done at the uh, frontline level, um, things like uh, how many uh, cashiers are needed for a particular retail store, for example. Um, operations management decisions are about deciding whether we should make something or buy something, whether we should outsource or vertically integrate. Uh, and, and that's another important aspect of operations management uh, that, that uh, makes, makes the, the idea of operations management um, um, make it very uh, applicable to, to business operations. Um, finally, quality management. Uh, last but not the least, uh, this is where um, organizations have to think about whether they're going to be proactive in trying to um, reduce the number of defects that customers get or whether they're going to be simply going after production uh, numbers and say that uh, we're going to have inspection at the end um, and, and look at quality that way. So to recap, uh, operations management can be studied uh, from, from these four different perspectives, uh, and, and that's what we'll be doing uh, in, in some of the sessions uh, later in this course.